We got a late person coming in saying, uh, hey, coach, I don't want to give this guy free clout. He's a YouTuber. However, he states to never cold approach unless the choosing signals are completely obvious. However, he is a male model. He is male model looking. So it may be easier for him. But he says, take time off to get yourself right mentally and in looks so that they approach you. Though it's not as likely as for them to approach, he states it can be. I'm kind of 50-50 on that. What's your take? You know what's interesting? I actually saw a video today that I was going to talk about, but I didn't, have, I didn't have time to export it to my uh, computer. But there's a so there's a guy on TikTok. His name is King something. He's like a six foot eight, a six foot eight inches tall black guy, kind of muscular, hair whatever. And so there's video of this guy, like just walking around, like on the beach, walking around in the city. And there's a guy that's following him that's taking uh, footage of all the women that are reacting to this guy, right? So he walks by, he's like, oh my God, this is that, oh my God, oh my God, this is that. right? And it's just like, it's like, again, it goes to like, again, whatever rules that they may have had at the point that they saw this guy, their ovaries are just churning and they're like, oh my God, this is like, whatever. So, you know, there are guys like that out in the world. They're hella tall or they got these model looks. And so admittedly, those guys have an easier time of guy, of women out there reacting to them, right? Now, here's the thing. Guys that are average height or average looks will see that and say, I have no chance because it's the height, it's the looks, whatever. And so if I try to cold approach a girl, but I don't have these things that these other guys have, then I'm going to completely fail. And it is what it is. As a guy that is five, nine and a half, that has had that has at times done some cold approach. I can tell you that's not true. But more importantly, I have uh, men that I went to school with that are like five, five five, six, that walked around and carried themselves as if they were men that were six foot eight and were model looks, all right? And so I don't want to discount that looking like you have model looks or being tall will not give you an edge up in your cold approach. It totally will. But a lot of the dating game also boils down to your mindset. The fact that the, the friends that I talked about have hot, gorgeous looking women that they are in long-term relationships with speaks to the idea of if you walk in with the right mindset, then there are women out there that they may not necessarily do that, that first look at you, but as you walk up to them, you're showing them confidence. You're asking about their day. You're making them laugh. You're building rapport. They're going to realize, oh, snap. He's making me feel things. And at the end of the day, it's what you make a woman feel that's going to cause you to have success in your cold approach. Now, for a guy that looks like a model and a guy that's six foot eight plus or whatever, it's going to make it a lot easier for them to make women feel those things instinctively and overarily um, in their loins, you know? But that doesn't mean you don't have a shot at that. It just means that you might have to have a little bit more game, whether it's like a little bit more knowing how to talk to women, a little bit more knowing how to approach them, how to get them comfortable. Like that might take a little bit more effort, but that doesn't mean that there's no effort there. Because again, I've seen guys probably shorter than you that have scored with women. I've, I have a, my, one of my brother's friends back in the day used to take ballet and, and as a ballet teacher, he's like a five foot three white dude. He's had was dating some of the baddest chicks that I know. But again, he's walking with the confidence of a taller guy. And so there are taller guys that walk with short man's confidence and also can't get women. Even if their height, even if their height initially draws women in, they start talking, oh, hey, what's going on? They start slunching over, start looking like less than. Women can read that too, you know? So all that to say, in terms of cold approach, I, I was I'm not a person that really preaches that too much on this channel, but I've I've cold approached at parties. I've accidentally cold approached women at bars before and it had it work out like so it's a it's a good skill to have because it, it's not so much about the cold approach as it is about your talk game. You need to get better at being able to talk to women so that way whatever situation you're in, you can do it. Because you might be you might be at a networking conference and all of a sudden a girl comes up to you or you are asking for directions and then she starts having a conversation. That was cold approach. That was unintentional, you know? In terms of intentional cold approach, as long as you were able to know the kinds of things women want to talk about, you know, like how to transition into a conversation that makes you feel comfortable, then I say it's ultimately worth the exercise. But, you know, also, I'm all for also meeting women through friends and meeting through women through online dating apps. Like, you should never turn down any avenue ultimately that's going to allow you to meet women and practice your skills. So that's my thought on that. So hopefully that gives you a better understanding. Uh, we got a question in the chat uh, from a previous guy. He says, question, the same girl I mentioned earlier, right after she said yes to the date, she asked me a question. I didn't answer and I haven't talked to her since Friday. 
The question is, are you an avid unsender? I don't know what that means. Exactly like that. Should I respond or can I just continue via the date? Well, so if your date is, let's see, da, 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 da. Trying to see, trying to see when she said that. I don't know when the date's supposed to. Okay, said so you have a date this Friday. So if you have a date this Friday and she talked to you last Friday, here's the thing. I, I've said I'm not for you initiating text between dates. If she's reaching out to you, then it's totally fine to like respond to her. The, the end goal, goal is we're not trying to get her into the habit of thinking you're going to be the guy that is texting her and calling her nonstop. That's not going to be you. In terms of her saying, are you an avid unsender? That sounds like a jokey question. Just send back a jokey response. You know, like, I mean, are you trying to say you're going to unsend some things or like, what are you talking about? Like make it jokey, make it, you know, funny enough, you know, and then she responds again, texting should always be one-to-one. -one. So she sent a text, you send a text back maybe with a question with it. And then like you leave it to her to ask in the next text. All right. Um, so yeah, if she's, if she's reaching out, that's totally fine to respond back. Like, we're not going to be like, yeah, Harry said, don't talk to her ever between dates. I didn't say that. I said, don't initiate big difference. All right. Uh, so this guy said, that's real. Got to have game and charm always. Sometimes I feel like I don't want to charm or be social, but force myself. So I don't stop. Well, here's the thing. I get that. You know, if you're a guy having to be charming when you're not used to being that way, it can feel like it's a role you're playing. I just, and I used to be bugged by that too. And then I realized on some level, we're playing roles with like everybody that comes into our lives. For example, as a grown ass man, I like to think that I can curse if I want to, you know? If I go around my mom though, who's still alive, she's in her seventies, I grew up in a house where that was not allowed. So I now got to play the role of a guy that does not curse when I go around my mom. And I'm fine with that because I'm respecting her, her place, you know? Some friends of mine, they want to talk about music stuff and movie stuff, and some friends aren't into that. I know with certain friends, hey, that's not going to be what they want to talk about, so I'm not going to bring it up. That's totally fine. So in the case of women, yeah, there's going to be scenarios where in order to get them to open up, you're going to have to probably like turn on some charm or, you know, say some words. Or in my case, I talk really fast, so I got to kind of talk slow like this a little bit because I know that, you know, talking too fast in the beginning freaks them out a little bit. Makes me look like I'm not in control. So I got to kind of calm it down. Like, do you think I like doing that when most of my life is spent talking fast? No, but I know if I want to get the results that I want, I got to be that way. And then as she gets to know me, I don't have to do that as much. Like you being charming in the beginning, totally fine. You can not be as that level of charm in terms of like the, the suave talk and stuff like that as you get to know her more and it'll be totally fine. But those, that, that first impression, the idea is we want to give her a first impression to you that is going to stay in her brain to where even if you're not acting like that, she knows you have the capacity to be like that. And so being a little more suave than usual is totally fine because again, we play roles for everybody we know. You's a bad boy, but you can't stop, won't stop. Let's you are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high class man. You are high class man.